An income statement is a summary of revenues and expenses over a period of time. There are two ways to prepare an income statement, a single step way or a multiple step way. In a single step income statement, all revenues and gains are grouped together and placed at the top of the income statement. All expenses and losses are grouped together and reported under the revenues and gains. The sum of all of these yields net income. The single step income statement is simple to prepare and does not have a specific format. It is useful if the only purpose is to quickly and simply calculate net income, but it fails to provide many useful details about the performance of the business. On the other hand, a multiple step income statement is more comprehensive and therefore also more useful for financial analysis of a company's profitability. Income statements prepared the multiple step way will have multiple sections, subsections, and subtotals, including gross profit. Multiple step income statements present gains and losses separately from revenues and expenses. Similarly, revenues and expenses connected to operating income are reported separately from all other revenues and expenses. This separation allows multiple step income statements to distinguish between several levels of income, such as income from continuing operations, income from discontinued operations, extraordinary gains and losses, net income, and comprehensive income. Besides the fact that GAAP requires the use of multiple step income statements, larger businesses prefer multiple step income statements because they provide investors with more information about the financial performance of a company. As the name indicates, several steps are involved in preparing a multiple step income statement. The first line of a multiple step income statement is sales. Sales includes the revenue a company generates during the financial statement period. For example, if a company sells $100,000 worth of products during the year, then that amount would equal sales during the financial statement period for a yearly financial statement. After sales, we will find sales returns and allowances. Sales returns occur when a customer returns merchandise. A sales allowance is similar to a discount, but unlike a discount, it is not offered because the business desires to increase sales, but because there are defects in the product. For example, a sales allowance is what would happen if a customer receives a 20% discount for having purchased a piece of furniture on display in the warehouse. Sales, net of returns and allowances, yields net sales. Net sales, minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. Keep in mind that cost of merchandise sold and cost of goods sold are synonymous terms. Cost of goods refers to the total cost of the goods that were sold during the period reported in the income statement. The basic formula to calculate cost of goods sold is beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. The portion in parentheses tells us how many units were available in inventory between beginning inventory and additional purchases made during the period. Ending inventory represents whatever has not yet been sold. Therefore, the difference between the portion of the formula in parentheses and ending inventory will yield the cost of goods that were sold. Another important element of the multiple step income statement is gross profit. Gross profit reflects how much profit a company has left for other operating and non-operating expenses after covering the cost of goods sold. The formula for gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. The gross profit amount indicates how much income can be used to run the company's operations. This may be used for expenses such as salaries, utilities, and rent, if a company has negative gross profit, it shows the company is selling goods below cost. For this reason, a negative gross profit is a strong indicator that a company will not last much longer in the marketplace unless this problem can be solved. After we calculate gross profit, we add up all the operating expenses and subtract them from gross profit. This yields operating income. Operating income is income earned from normal business operations. Common operating expenses can include advertising, 
sales commissions, or supplies. These expenses are basically anything that involves the day-to-day -day operations of the company. Gross profit minus operating expenses equals operating income. Once operating income has been computed, we add non-operating income and expenses, extraordinary gains and losses, and income from discontinued operations. We finally subtract income taxes and arrive at net income. Examples of non-operating income could be rent income from additional space the company may have that is rented out to other companies. It could also be interest income. On the other hand, a typical example of non-operating expenses is interest expense. Net operating income plus non-operating income minus non-operating expenses minus income taxes equals net income. Net income is all the income left after all expenses have been deducted, regardless of whether they were operating or non-operating expenses. The final step is to calculate comprehensive income, which is the sum of net income and other comprehensive income. Comprehensive income includes transactions that do not affect a company's operations. An example of other comprehensive income is gains or losses from foreign currency translation. Net income plus other comprehensive income equals comprehensive income. Keep in mind that perhaps the most important indicator of performance here is operating income. The larger the operating income of a company, the more successful the company may be. The larger income shows that the operations of the company have been profitable before considering other revenue and expenses.